In South Africa, at least eight people have been killed after massive storms hit Cape Town after months of drought. Among the dead is a family of four who were killed in a fire sparked by lightning. Thousands of people have been left homeless by heavy rains and flooding. Stormy weather has gripped various parts of the Western Cape since Tuesday night. The South African Weather Service has warned that the storms will continue throughout the next few days. Emergency services are on high alert and members of the Defence Force are on standby. Quick, this will be enough to get going. Trouble, guys. Everything's going. Everything's gone. It's all gonna burn.
8 juni 2017 plet in helle brand wat nou daar die gang is ons het het gister morgen 11 uur het is nou uh, net so voor 7 die 8 juni het lijkt nie goed nie uh, waar ook gardens daar op die hier is die trend so uh, met die 100 meter van ons huis af ons nou staan Donkerder is in Robberg. Watching the dangerous areas now. <coughs> we are on the driving on the beach here by Buffalo Bay. Apparently, uh, Belvedere Park, Duncan, is um, flattened to the ground. Um, there's no hope for the, the, the schools have burnt down, the Oakdale or Oak Ridge school has burnt down, and the Montessori has burnt down. They're evacuating the, the hospitals. Apparently, it looks like a war zone, dude. Can we check the area where we came in into Buffalo Bay? It's, it's burning on either side. We had to dash through just to get past the flames. It was quite, it was quite hectic. Cool, man. See you later. Cheers. Well, more on one of our developing stories now. The Nisner fires have engulfed most parts of the area. Our reporter Sandy McCowan is standing by with an update. She's been in the area since the early hours of this morning. Sandy, a very good morning to you. Give us some idea of what you've seen. You're in the middle of the town this morning. The fires in Nisner are still not uh, uh, under control. It's been a night for the firemen who have been fighting the fires. The wind has been quite hectic, it's been really high, and the firemen have been fighting the spreading fires all night, trying to save houses, as many houses as they can. We have seen a number of houses going up in flames, and it's been quite a devastating scene all night. Uh, Sandy, can you give us some idea? You have managed to speak to residents, many of most of them, thousands, almost 10,000 having been evacuated. Uh, just give us a sense of just, you know, what they're feeling, what are they saying? I mean, they, they, some of them having lost everything, I would imagine. It's, uh, most people here are absolutely shell-shocked. That is the only way to um, describe how they're feeling. Many are walking around very shocked. Um, a lot are in tears. Many are um, missing loved ones. They've... Um, who they got separated from, evacuated. Many are uh, just don't know where to start. Their houses have been destroyed. They've lost everything. They just don't know what to do now. Many have been at evacuation centers all night. We don't even know if they still have houses to go back to. Many, it's just an absolute scenes of devastation, and, and many are so 
so, so shell-shocked here. Yeah, we, we know that there was an informal settlement that, that was ablaze last night. Can you give us some idea of how many people uh, affected there? What is the situation there? Has it been completely destroyed? The entire town was surrounded by flames. They, um, one disaster management officer said up to 150 houses and structures and more as, as the um, um, reports are coming in have been destroyed. We spoke to a farmer last night who lost his farmhouse. He lost all of his chickens because um, he's a free range chicken farmer. He lost everything. There is absolute peace of destruction here. Um, it affected everybody. The entire town has been affected. Uh, 20 suburbs had to be evacuated last night. 20 suburbs have been affected by fire um, in, the, in the informal settlement areas, in, in the suburb areas, right around the entire Nisna. There isn't a single area in Nisna that has not been affected by the fires. And uh, what of the firefighters? They've been working through the night, Sandy. We know that there's more help that has arrived, more help that's on the way. But uh, if you've managed to speak to them, just how are they finding this? Do they feel that they can, that, that, that they can do this, that they can beat this fire? The um, firefighters have been working through the night. They have been working nonstop. And they've actually, and many of them have actually been released now so they can get some sleep so, because Cape, the firefighters uh, from Cape Town have arrived, from all areas of, around that have come to help. And many of the firefighters are absolutely exhausted. They have been nonstop f fighting the fires for almost 24 hours now, nonstop. They're exhausted. Um, it's been very overwhelming for them because when the wind has gotten up, the fires have spread rapidly. They've, sp they've spread as far as Mossel Bay um, to Plettenberg Bay. The fire is huge and they've been doing the best they can, but it has just been getting out of control. All right, and from what you're seeing, and as we, we've heard earlier and from you now, that uh, the, the winds seem to be picking up, does this fire seem to be spreading very rapidly or do they look like, like they might be able to contain it in the next couple of hours? They, there are pockets of flare-ups at the moment. Um, in places like the Villa Estate is uh, out of control at the moment. They have managed to get it under control in certain areas, but there are certain other areas that have flared up. So they say that it's not under control right now because those areas, as the wind picks up, as it gets even higher, which is expected to during the day, um, those flares can, can meet rapidly. So they've still got quite a battle ahead of them today. All right, and, and, and like we've been saying, I mean, many people know Nisna is a very popular holiday destination, Sandy. From what you've seen, most of what people come to see and experience there, has all of that been destroyed? A lot of, uh, we've seen a lot of b and we know a hotel has been destroyed, even the provincial hospital had to be evacuated last night, and flames uh, left us on, on, on the doorstep. Um, many of the houses in BCC have been destroyed. Many of the touristy areas, uh, Belvedere, have been destroyed. So it's a really devastating scene at the moment. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Let you get back to work. That's our reporter, Sandy McCowan. She's in the middle of NISA, in the midst of this fire that continues to rage in pockets, she says, uh, around the town. All right, well, staying with this, let's go now back to our reporter in Naisna, Lerato Tipa. She's been covering uh, the situation there for us throughout the day. Lerato, good afternoon to you once again. Uh, just take us through how many houses have been destroyed and what is the extent of damage to property? Behind her. Yes, a little bit, a little bit further. 
Further well, on. a very good afternoon to you, Natasha. We are broadcasting live from Nisna as we have been near the very part of the day. Like I said to you earlier, Natasha, that besides uh, Nisna obviously being a place where people like to, to live in and have houses, it's also a beautiful tourist destination. We're now in an area that has really been a prime area in Nisna, area where people have holiday houses. And if you look just behind me, you will just see just how bad this house is. This is a holiday house. Obviously, the owner is not here. He was evacuated. But this is the damage of this house. Um, numerous houses here in this area have actually been destroyed by the fire. We're speaking double-story houses that literally have been gushed down by these fires. So to confirm to you that the number of houses, we went to an area called Nisner Heights, and in that area, over about 20 or 30 houses have been destroyed. But the total number, we have not yet confirmed of how many properties have been destroyed. Now, we also have been speaking to people in, the, in this area who have been sharing us, us their stories of how the fire started, how they experienced the fire burning down houses and how this affected them. Joining us this afternoon is the Deputy Mayor, Peter Mayer, obviously who is a local from this area, who has seen the devastation and obviously is also trying to feel the sentiments of those who have been affected. Mr. Peter, just take us brief, briefly. Um, how bad has this fire been and how has the community um, been affected? It has been a devastating fire, particularly for this area, Brenton on Sea. I'm actually a, res a resident of this area. The fire swept through here extremely quickly. We have a lot of old people, residents, infirm people, wheelchairs. The community pulled together fantastically well. We uh, evacuated people down to the beach and then used four-wheel drives to take them around to Buffalo Bay um, to get them out of harm's way. Uh, we did that, I believe, without any uh, loss of life. Now you speak of elderly people that have been affected. That must obviously have been um, not such a good thing to experience. Um, how have they been taken care of in, in terms of being evacuated and are there places and centres that cater to their disabilities? Yes, we have uh, a number of evacuation centres around Neisner. The particular residents from this area were evacuated to Buffalo Bay and then re-evacuated thereafter when the fire started approaching Buffalo Bay to Sedgefield uh, where they were housed for the night. And then also, you're obviously from this area, so you've lived here for a number of years, you've experienced the life, you know how beautiful a place it is. I mean, the sea is literally uh, a walk away and you wake up with such beautiful views. Um, how is this personally now, on a personal basis, how has this fire affected you? I think when you drove here, uh, you just saw like a, almost a lunar landscape. It was completely burnt. This is normally thick bush, lots of trees, beautiful uh, environment in which to walk and hike and you can see the devastation all around you. It is absolutely heartbreaking. One of the challenges in this area has also been in terms of communication. It's hard to go through to fire department or to emergency personnel because the lines have been cut. Are there emergency in place to try and rectify that? Yes, we've had uh, our emergency operations centre working all through the night uh, from early on yesterday. Uh, coordinating with all of the different uh, stakeholders, uh, you know, the, the, the emergency services coming in to help us from outside, including our own. And there's been a tremendous effort at coordinating that, getting people to evacuation centres and getting them food, water, clothing and, and other necessities. And then lastly, Deputy Mayor, I think most people here in Nanza are still anxious, are still scared, are still wondering, are these fires going to continue and where does that place them as residents? What is your message to them and also just to thank those that have come out in support from as far as PE to support the people of Nanza? We've had uh, support from as far away as Cape Town. Uh, we've had firefighters from all over the province. Uh, it has been a fantastic response. Um, obviously, while the fires were raging yesterday in very, very high winds, there was very little that, that could be done. But with the, with the help that has come in, you can see that the situation has been stabilised. There are a number of pockets still that need to be brought under control. Uh, they, they are working on it. They're doing a fantastic job. The emergency services, the firefighters, uh, the um, first aid people, it, it's been a, an all-round effort and um, in very, very difficult circumstances, very high winds, extremely dangerous fires, uh, communications being a big problem, uh, they have managed to coordinate an effort that I think has done us all proud. Well, there was a deputy mayor of Nisla, Peter Mayer, saying that despite the tragedy of this fire, what he can say is that the firefighters and all those who put their lives in front for the sake of others is definitely commendable. It's back to you in studio. Yeah, he has own 
Voda se trenutno povlači i ne očekuje se novi poplavni talas. Trenutno nema ugroženih lica. Voda se povlači, mi očekujemo i dalje da se voda nastavi sa povlačenjem. Mislim da ono najgore što se desi ludmi da je za sada završeno. Na terenu se nalaze vatrova sa spasiločke jedinice iz Pančeva i iz Vršta. Isto tako su upućeni specialistički timovi za spasavanje radna vodi iz Beograda. Ode žandarmerija ako bude trebalo da dođe u spremljeni isto tako da dođe u pomoć. Verovatno da imate informaciju da je nastradala jedna starija ženska osoba. Još uvek se ne zna, ne možemo reći tačan uzrok zbog čega je nastradala, tako da će i sada u daljem toku reći zbog čega se podesi. Voda je ušla u više desetina domaćinstava, pa iako se povlači, stanovništvo je čeras neće moći da se vrati u domove. Лето в центре России не успеет побаловать теплом. Небо над регионом скоро снова закроют дождевые облака. Ждать ли потопов, как в Польше, где вызовы спасателей во время ливни исчисляли сотнями? И насколько опустится температура в столице нашей страны? Вы смотрите «Погоду» на телеканале «Россия-24». Я Евгений Тишковец, ведущий специалист центра ФОБОС. Здравствуйте. Итак, тепло в центре России снова уступит место прохладе и дождям. Непогода идет со стороны Восточной Европы. Во вторник и среду здесь прошли мощные ливни. Только в польском городе Познань местные коммунальщики получили более 100 вызовов от автомобилистов, оказавшихся в водных ловушках, и жителей, чьи дома подтопило. Помимо дождей, проблемы создавали сильный ветер и грозы. После ударов молнии сгорели два дома. Рухнувшие деревья повредили десятки линий электропередачи. Итак, ливни с градом накануне накрыли Ставрополь и спровоцировали потопы на улицах краевой столицы. Гейзеры из сломанных ливневок и полноводные реки вместо дорог шокировали горожан, которые делились впечатлениями от потопов в социальных сетях. Потоки воды затопили половину одной из главных транспортных артерий города. Повсюду образовались автомобильные заторы, а на окраинах Ставрополя ливни сопровождались градом. Люди прятались от непогоды под деревьями и навесами. Ну, накануне сильный дождь прошел и в Пятигорске. В результате, в результате улицы города тоже оказались подтоплены. Картина аналогичная. Машины практически плывут по дорогам. Вода почти полностью закрывает колеса легковых автомобилей.
Inilah jalan Atista Garut Mengalami kebanjiran yang sangat parah Ini juga memasuki Dari atas Arah atas Dimungkinkan daerah Cimanuk Pemoyanan Sona Intan Terlibat banjir Ini banjir sudah Amankan dulu Pak ke tempat yang aman Pak kondisi lantai dua kami nah di pak tanggelam semua sudah aduh tunggu tunggu pak Pantas 
dan tanpa mutaan memutarkan Banjir bandang menerjang dua kecamatan di Garut, Jawa Barat selasa malam. Dan beginilah kondisi permukiman warga di wilayah Gorda, kecamatan Targong, Kidul, Garut, Jawa Barat pasca banjir bandang. Dampak luapan anak sungai Cimanuk itu membuat sejumlah kendaraan terseret hingga rusak. Ada tujuh kendaraan yaitu mobil dan motor di wilayah pemukiman Gorda yang terseret arus banjir bandang. Rencananya dua SST, Batalion 303 Tengkorak Putih Kostrat akan diterjunkan ke dua kecamatan yang terkena dampak bencana. Personil TNI akan membantu warga membersihkan rubah serta mengevakuasi puing-puing sampah yang masih menumpuk di jalan pasca banjir. Dan kami dari Unit Radar 303 akan menurunkan sekitar 1-2 SST untuk membantu Kodim dalam melaksanakan uh, pembersihan. Badan Penanggulangan Bencana Daerah masih melakukan pendataan jumlah rumah rusak yang terkena dampak bencana banjir bandang ini. Satu orang dilaporkan meninggal akibat banjir bandang. Dari Garut, Jawa Barat, Taufik Hidayat TV One mengabarkan. Badan Nasional Penanggulangan Bencana menetapkan tanggap darurat selama 14 hari untuk Kabupaten Toli-Toli, Sulawesi Tenggara pasca banjir bandang. Banjir menewaskan enam orang dan merendam ribuan rumah. Dahsyatnya banjir bandang di Kabupaten Toli-Toli, Sulawesi Tenggara membuat empat kecamatan terendam banjir. BNPB menetapkan tanggap darurat untuk Kabupaten Toli-Toli selama 14 hari ke depan terhitung sejak kemarin. Puluhan ribu rumah dari empat kecamatan yakni kecamatan Lampasio, kecamatan Baulan, kecamatan Galang, dan Dako Pemean terendam banjir akibat hujan yang terjadi empat jam. Hingga saat ini BNPB Pusat bersama tim BPBD Kabupaten Toli-Toli, Muspida dan pihak terkait masih terus melakukan pendataan korban banjir di empat kecamatan di Kabupaten Toli-Toli. Sebelumnya dahsyatnya banjir bandang di Kabupaten Toli-Toli, Sulawesi Tenggara membuat empat kecamatan terna banjir. Dalam video amatir, air dan kuatnya arus banjir mengakibatkan sejumlah korban hilang terbawa arus. Korban sebelumnya ingin menyelamatkan kapal ikan Mutiara Indah, namun akhirnya terbawa arus banjir. BNPB menetapkan tanggap darurat untuk Kabupaten Toli-Toli selama 14 hari ke depan terhitung sejak kemarin.
We turn things over to CBS 4's Gary Nelson. He's live at Sawgrass Mills Mall, which was actually shut down today because of the flooding. Gary. Well, Sawgrass Mills is the second largest mall in the state of Florida. It is, in fact, one of Florida's major tourist attack attractions, but for reasons that are quite obvious, uh, neither tourists nor locals were doing any shopping here today. Sawgrass Mills, the 11th largest mall in the nation, underwater, out of business on a soggy Wednesday. Roadways into and around the mall so inundated, Sawgrass announced it would be closed two hours before the scheduled opening. Still, some came. In the Beamer there, Brent Gibson came to help and ended up needing help. So you came to rescue your wife. And I'm stuck. And you're stuck. Such is married life. Now, how's your wife doing? Well, she's doing great because she's not here. This woman took a turn over a submerged sawgrass curb with her kids in the car into a ditch. Nobody got hurt. Some tried hoofing it to no avail. You took off your shoes. Yes. You walked to the mall through yes. the water and were encountered by who? Who told you why? Security told us that it was closed because of the flood. And you couldn't get in? <laughs> no. So now we're going back and we're going to go eat something. <laughs> Yellow tape blocked entrances to the mall, strangers offering helping hands to those in need. Now, the floodwaters have receded considerably here at uh, Sawgrass Mills and, for that matter, across Broward County today. The mall has established a hotline uh, that has information on when it will be reopening. You can get that number at CBSMiami.com. For now, we're live in Sunrise. Gary Nelson, CBS 4 News. Now, some of the worst flooding we've seen over the past couple of days has been in Davie. Well, Elliot, they're dealing with the situation as best as possible. Some of the residents we spoke to say this really caught them off guard. They haven't dealt with this in over 10 years. Take a look. This is what they're dealing with, one to two feet of water in some areas. Now, fortunately, these are mobile homes, so they're elevated. The water not making its way into the homes yet. However, residents say they're concerned because if it keeps raining, they're afraid it will. I heard that this is the worst it's been in 10 years. So I don't know what to expect, like how much more are we going to get? Residents at the Paradise Village mobile home community in Davie are concerned. The relentless rain is causing major flooding in the area. When did this all start? I mean, since yesterday, mm -hmm. I mean, before yesterday was, but yesterday was, boom, this is it. So today I said, we better get out of here. We, we, we shouldn't stay here because it's, it's going to rain tomorrow and it's going to keep gonna... raining. Areli San Conrado Aguirre are among the hundreds of residents surrounded by nothing but water. The streets and low lying areas of Davie bearing the brunt of a string of rain bands drenching the area. I never saw this type of water like this so high. Never. Range a lot, but we don't know. We never see this. There's close to a foot of water or two in some areas. And a major concern here, there is a big lake in the middle of the mobile home park. But at this point, because of the amount of water, you can't tell where the lake ends and the street begins. The flood water is also keeping many at home, some students from school and others from going to work. Because I'm afraid if I get to work, because it's supposed to rain all day, I won't be able to get home. You know, so my husband did go to work and I'm keeping him informed. Gets too high, come home. At a nearby gas station off State Road 84, the pumps are pushing the water out. Meanwhile, these residents would just have to wait it out. Well, some are waiting it out inside. You can see some others are venturing out here, seeing what's going on. A lot of them are walking out here, but we urge everyone to be extremely careful because of the amount of water. If you're not wearing rain boots, uh, you don't know exactly what's underneath. Now, just like this lake here at uh, this mobile home park, which is just off State Road 84 between Flamingo and 136th Street, here in Davie, there are a lot of lakes, there are a lot of ponds, there are a lot of canals, and they are overflowing. So if you are driving out in this area, be extremely careful. Again, and as I said earlier, you don't know where the street begins 
and the lake ends. For now, we're live in Davie. Maribel Rodriguez, CBS 4 News. All this rain means flooding across South Florida. Take a look at this video from Chopper 4, and you can see some furniture floating away. There it is. A young child actually swimming out in the water. And look at all the water in Davie. You can see what appears to be an entire horse farm flooded. This is right near Hiatus, south of I-595. CBS 4's Hank Tester has spent the afternoon and the evening in Davie. How's it looking out there now, Hank? It is wet, Rick. Check it out behind me. It's been like this all day. And then another storm rolled in this afternoon. You'll see it in this story. Let's take a look. We are attempting to cross the river. And using an inflatable raft. A rescue mission. Have to feed the cats. And getting around parts of Davie is all about wading and water transportation. Can't get into your development, too much water? Here's what you have to do. Park outside, walk in. Or go by small boat. In this Davie neighborhood, a canoe at work. And he's picking up a couple of bucks along the way. I'm canoeing people around the block so they can go to work. The big picture from Chopper 4, parts of Davie underwater. The rainwater just has nowhere to go. Most homes to this point barely above the water line. I've identified a lot of situations where flash flooding occurred in the water almost got into the homes, but we have not had a single report of a family being displaced. I've lived in Florida for 20 years. I've never seen anything like this before. And she's not alone. Davy residents overwhelm. You just can't get around. And this is not an isolated story. SUV off the road and in a canal. Hundreds of cars inundated. Electronics likely damaged beyond repair. Yes, it is water, water everywhere. Just so much water came down that uh, uh, it's overflowed. It's come up. It's never, I've never seen it like this. And as predicted, Wednesday's onslaught brewed up out west around 4 o'clock. By 5.30, heavy rain was pelting the Davie area once again. The worst has ever been. Well, no one uh, requested shelter so far, but the American Red Cross, I'm told, is going to be standing by all night just in case somebody does. And by the way, Rick, we may... Water's still here. <laughs> it looks wet. <laughs> we see it, Hank. Thank you very much.